Hello, my name's Clive Groves. My family has been growing violets for several generations and I hold a national collection of uh, viola odorata and palma violets. Odorata is the sweet of the native sweet violets. I want to talk to you today about what happens when your parcel of violet plants from us arrives on your doorstep. Okay, well, obviously the first thing to do is to open it up. Uh, violets will only take a certain amount of time in the dark, and if you don't open them up straight away, then I'm afraid the leaves will start to go yellow, and then eventually the plants will actually rot off. So they've got to see the daylight to get the light and the air around them. So let's unpack the parcel. Inside you'll find your instructions, cultivation instructions, gives you one or two ideas, pest and disease and how to plant. Um, we've got packing, um, sometimes it's straw, sometimes it's hay. Today we're using dry beech leaves for no other reason. There's plenty here on the nursery and they look rather nice. And inside we find the violet plants. Roots are in polythene, the top is left free, otherwise they'd probably rot if they were put in polythene for too long. Take them out. Um, now, ideally, you'll be planting these straight away, but if you can't plant them straight away, there's a way you can keep them for one or two days. It's just to leave them in the polythene bags, um, give them a little drop of water so they can stay there. Now, Close the top of the bag, put the bag upright, pl ideally plant them in, or just place them in a, a container. And um, you can probably leave them like this in a cool light place for, say, two, three days, and then you really must get them in the ground. Now you've got a choice. You're either going to plant them in the garden or you're going to plant them in pots. Uh, now today... We'll, first of all, we'll plant them in the garden, so um, let's go out and uh, find a suitable place. Hello, right, here we are in the, uh, the nursery garden. Um, look for a suitable spot. It's very important that um, violets have uh, winter sunshine, but it's also equally important that violets have summer shade. So we're looking for a spot. One spot you can use in a, a garden is um, herbaceous border where you can plant the violets and um, during the summer time the lupins, the delphiniums all grow around them and shade them from the sun and then come the autumn and the winter they die away exposing the violets to the, uh, to the winter sunshine and thereby sort of giving you plenty of flower. Um, the other alternative is to plant them under deciduous trees and deciduous shrubs. Uh, I've got what I think is the ideal location here. Um, Roses, you can plant them under roses, lose their leaves. Up here we've got a nice wisteria again. Wisterias aren't evergreen, they drop their leaves. And so it's slightly facing east. We're getting a bit of early morning sun and then we're in shade for the rest of the day. Now generally I like to plant um, violets in threes. They Very often in the wild they like to sort of uh, make a, a community, if you like, of, uh, of violets. And um, so I'm going to plant three of the same variety in this pot just here. I would just mention that another idea, always as they can be grown, as they have been commercially in the past, in orchards. And um, so you can plant them under the trees in an orchard. Um, Hampton Court area in the London, near the cities, um, very often the, the growers grew them under the trees because they get a spring crop as well as their summer crop of apples and autumn crop. So here we have the violets. Let's plant them. I say plant them in threes. Um, take them out of their polythene. And we need to dig three hoes. So let's say one hoe here. Two. And then a 
third. That should give a nice little colony of violets. Now you need to add humus, because if you think of violets, they grow in the hedgerow where there's plenty of leaf mold and that type of thing. So um, what I like to use, and often use and with most of my plants, uh, violets are no exception, is a bit of horse compost. That's a mixture of peat or peat substitute, um, straw, um, and a bit of limestone, because most violets like a little bit of lime. So, um, so we put that in the bottom of the hose. Mix it in with the soil, we don't want to put it neat. And then, in the way of fertiliser, again, sort of trying to keep a little bit organic, um, we've got a choice of two things. We've got blood fish and bone, which is very good for a more immediate um, uh, fertiliser. It's high in nitrogen. But um, it's fine now because it'll help them grow um, up to the autumn. But then um, later on, in the springtime, they still need a, a seed source. So I like to put a little bit of bone meal in the bottom of the hole as well, um, because this would be available to them in the springtime. And mix them both in. I'm a great mixer. And again, don't sit them on that neat fertiliser. Just mix the soil before you plant them. And here we go. Let's pull the soil around them so the soil is level with the crown. Last one. And then it's always nice to keep them moist. A little bit more of the mushroom compost just to fill in round as a mulch. And there, they keep nice and um, doing a bit of glass there. They keep nice and moist now. There'll be a little bit of fertilizer from that um, horse compost or mushroom compost, bent mushroom compost available in the spring. And um, hopefully come the springtime you'll have the wonderful smell of these violets coming up and then later on in the summer this wonderful Gertrude Jekyll with its really rich fragrance uh, will give you a fragrance in the air for the summertime so everything covered. Okay right we'll see you back in the in the greenhouse. Back in the uh, the greenhouse now back in the nursery and um, now let's just show you how to um, pot them on I personally enjoy having them in pots, you've got more control over the environment um, and of course in a greenhouse situation or conservative situation you can actually smell the perfume better, even the leaves smell uh, on a warm day. Now the important thing really is with pots is that uh, you mustn't put them in any artificial heat, uh, they must have the cool winter. If you try to heat them up and get them to come too early by putting artificial heating on, then you'll find you'll just get a lot of leaf and uh, not very much flower. So choose your container. Um, we always grow them in these sort of 12 centimetre pots um, and then we knock them out of these to send them to you by post and with some of the soil off to make it a little bit cheaper to send. So you never should um, sort of put them in too big a pot straight away. It's always better to put um, a slightly larger pot than another slightly larger pot when you pot on. If you, if you pot on too much, then uh, they just stay in the same old soil. They don't fill the soil uh, volume. Uh, so let's choose the pot. It can be, if you like clay, no reason why not. Um, if you do use clay pots, then make sure you use crocs and make sure it's a concave size down um, before you put your soil in. Obviously, growing commercially, it's not really viable anymore to grow in clay, so we, we tend to use plastic pots. And the soil uh, we use, um, I like to use John in, it's a little bit old-fashioned in that way. Um, but John has got some goodness in it, it's got loam in it, which is most important. And with the loam in, you'll find that they've got a lot of goodness in even if you get, forget to, to feed them now and again, there's still a lot of goodness in it. 
but we've tried to emulate the hedgerow, so to put a little bit more humus in, I'm going to put some multi-purpose compost. So a scoop and a half of that. And then to emulate again the hedgerow, I'm going to use some coarse grit because in banks and hedgerows, and obviously they're very well drained, although they're kept moist, they're well drained. So I add some of that. I'm a great mixer of various compost for various crops. So hence when I retired from the office and my son and daughter took over, uh, then the staff uh, presented me with my retirement present of a, a big yellow concrete mixer, which, um, which gets a lot of use. Okay, well that's about right. Good mixture together there. And so we take the pot um, and put some soil in the bottom. Take the plant. There we are. Add some more soil. nicely settled, just up to the crown again, and uh, we take the label, always remember to label the varieties, it's nice to know what you've got you might want to go and order another one of the same variety over the internet um, we sell them all the year round, don't forget and then we get the watering can, give it a good watering in now remember again if you're putting it in a cold greenhouse or in a frame that it needs to be in a shaded place again. It doesn't want the very hot sunshine because for one thing they don't like the heat and for another thing they'll be liable to get red spider mite because red spider mite love that warmth. Runners are um, the way the plants increase. They sort of uh, run across the surface and root in again and uh, which is all very well if you want to increase your violet population. But if you want them to provide good flower, then it's important that you take these runners off. And um, because all the goodness will go into making this growth, and it won't go into making the flower that I, uh, I should imagine you'll be looking for in the springtime. So as the runners come, you could even sort of make another plant of that because there's a little root coming out. Uh, as the runners shoot out, take them off. And there we are. Now, what I've talked about so far is Viola odorata, the sweet violet. Now, there is one other violet that we stock and we're in the national uh, collection, and it's the Parma violet. It looks very similar plant. Um, again, you don't want them to make these runners, so you take all these runners off. The important thing about this Parma violet is... Um, that they don't really do terribly well outside. They're not a native of this country. They came in somewhere from, from the east uh, into Italy and, and into the rest of Europe. We don't know exactly what the origin is. But the point is, although they may grow outside, they won't really have very good quality flower. Little double sort of palmer flowers you'll get on these. So you will need to grow these in the greenhouse. You won't be able to put them in the border. Other than that, um, code greenhouse, code frame conservatory that's not heated and um, treat them in the same way take the runners off and in the springtime you'll have this different type of perfume it's more of a confectionery smell rather than the pungent sort of smell of our sweet violets so um, there we are I hope you enjoy your plants and, um, and it all goes well for you and uh, enjoy your violets thank you very much <laughs>